Over a gallant career spanning nearly five decades, the USS Midway launched more than 300,000 aircraft, flown by the nation's finest naval and marine aviators. Tonight, we celebrate 100 years of United States Marine Corps aviation. Born at the Annapolis Naval Aviation Camp, forged in the epic battle that gave the USS Midway its name, and ever present today, wherever and whenever our nation's interests demand. In the air, on land and at sea, in crisis and conflict, American Marines have responded to their nation's call throughout the Corps' proud history. This evening, we are here to honor two former Marines who, through their respective lifetimes of public service, have served their country and their community with unparalleled distinction. For young Pete Wilson, an ROTC scholarship to Yale resulted in a first-class education and a commission as a Marine Infantry Officer. His three years in the Corps honed the fundamental values that would underscore his subsequent career in public service, integrity, perseverance, and an unwavering commitment to do what's right. In 1966, he was elected to the California Assembly from San Diego, and just six years later became the city's youngest mayor. Pete Wilson wasn't content to simply name San Diego America's finest city. He set out to prove it. His vision and energy would literally transform the city as an aging urban core was revitalized into what would become the world-famous Gaslamp District. By 1980, when the San Diego Trolley debuted, Mayor Wilson had earned a statewide reputation for innovative, effective, and disciplined civic leadership. With his election to the U.S. Senate from California in 1982, Pete's profile would go national. Over the next eight years, this former Marine would burnish his reputation for strength and toughness. A ruptured appendix couldn't stop him from casting a key vote in support of President Reagan's 1985 budget. A proud fiscal conservative, he was named Watchdog of the Treasury during every year of his tenure. And his innate sense of fairness led him to co-sponsor the landmark Civil Liberties Act of 1988. Two years later, at the height of his Senate career, he would resign his seat to become the 36th Chief Executive of California. Governor Pete Wilson would be remembered as the man who led the Golden State from the depth of recession to economic prosperity. Once again, he would demonstrate the discipline to rein in runaway spending while creating a business-friendly environment. Sweeping welfare reform, historic education reform, and tougher anti-crime measures would follow. He signed the popular Three Strikes legislation soon emulated across the nation. When Pete Wilson left office after two highly successful terms, his approval rating matched Ronald Reagan's at the end of his governorship. Today, Pete remains active in business and civic affairs with an emphasis on political reform, as well as focusing on education reform and national security issues. He enjoys spending time with wife Gail, his children, and five grandchildren and is known to take in a Padre game every so often. But no matter how much Pete Wilson appreciates the national pastime, it's highly unlikely that he attends anywhere near the number of Padre games as does a fellow former Marine, whom we also honor tonight. Hi everybody, Jerry Coleman here, Qualcomm Stadium, San Diego, California, the New York Yankees, San Diego Padres, game four of the 1998 World Series. For 40 years, Jerry Coleman has been a fixture in San Diego sports. Pitch on the way to Garvey, hit high to right center field, way back, going, going, and it's gone! Coming off quickly, Finley, 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 he's under, he's got it, and the Padres draped the National League flag around their shoulders for 1998. Yeah. And this time he did strike him out of man.
As the longtime voice of the San Diego Padres, he's been synonymous with baseball for two generations of hometown fans, while donating time and attention to numerous charitable causes. He began his storied play-by-play -play career in the Yankee Stadium press box as partner to the legendary Red Barber. But before taking to the broadcast booth, he had run the base paths below in pinstripes as a member of the mighty Bronx Bombers. Coleman's back to single to center. Woodling tallies the Yanks' fourth run of the game. Coleman makes a spectacular stop. Named the 1949 American League Rookie of the Year, Jerry Coleman would go on to become an All-Star and a World Series MVP over the course of his nine-year Major League career, a key contributor to one of the iconic teams in sports history. Yankee Jerry Coleman digs in a little deeper and keeps on swinging. Much to the Cleveland pitcher's dismay. But his greatest accolades were earned far from the sports pages and the bright lights of the Big Apple. For Jerry Coleman had come of age in the crucible of combat as a Marine aviator. Taking to the skies at the age of 19, Jerry would fly 57 combat missions in the Pacific during World War II. And then, three years into his Yankee career, would fly 63 more missions over Korea, becoming the only major league player in history to see combat in two wars. The Yankees would win four World Series titles with Coleman in the lineup, but they could never overshadow the honors bestowed upon him by a grateful nation. Two distinguished flying crosses, 13 air medals, and three Navy citations. In the words of President Ronald Reagan, some people spend an entire lifetime wondering if they made a difference. The Marines don't have that problem. In the core, in their community, and on behalf of their country, Jerry Coleman and Pete Wilson define what American patriot means. A lifelong commitment to public service, displaying character, integrity, and selfless dedication in service to their fellow citizens. Tonight, we are proud to honor Pete Wilson and Jerry Coleman with the 2012 Midway American Patriot Award.